Welcome to today's five minute Bible study in the Acts of the Apostles. Today we're beginning to look at Acts chapter 12. Let's read the first verse. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Intending to persecute them. What we come to in chapter 12 is the account of the second persecution against the church, or the second wave of persecution. Now you will recall, of course, that the first persecution occurred when Stephen, the deacon, was martyred. We read about that in Acts chapter 7 and Acts chapter 8. After Stephen was martyred, this great persecution broke out against the church led by Saul. It was primarily focused against the Jewish believers who were Greek speaking. That is, who had been raised outside of Palestine and who spoke Greek as their primary language. The apostles, you remember, were not terribly affected by that wave of persecution. They were still held in high favor by the people. But many of the Greek speaking Jewish believers suffered intensely and many of them had to flee Jerusalem. We saw how in their leaving the city, they took the gospel with them and spread it to Samaria, up and down the seaboard, all the way to the city of Antioch. Saul, who was the leader of that persecution, eventually, of course, was converted when he met Jesus, and he became a believer. And then they had to send Saul to Tarsus for his own protection. And when Saul was removed, when he moved back to Tarsus, that first persecution came to an end. But that was about 12 or 13 years ago. And now in Acts chapter 12, the second wave of persecution is beginning and it's led by a fellow by the name of Herod the king. Now who is this Herod? We know him from history as Herod Agrippa, also called Herod Agrippa I, because later on we're gonna meet another Herod Agrippa. But this Herod Agrippa is the grandson of Herod the Great. Remember, Herod the Great was the one who tried to kill Jesus right after he was born. Herod Agrippa, this Herod, had been sent as a boy to be raised in Rome. And while he was in Rome, he became friends with several members of the imperial family. He became close friends with a fellow by the name of Caligula, who would become emperor, and also who became a close friend with a fellow by the name of Claudius, who had also become emperor. Now, when Caligula came to the throne, when he became emperor, he gave political favors to Herod Agrippa. He gave him a kingship. He began to rule in some of the areas of Palestine, some small territories. Later on, he expanded that and Herod became the king of Galilee, replacing Herod Antipas. Now, you remember Herod Antipas was the Herod, by the way, who was the uncle of this Herod Agrippa, but Herod Antipas was the Herod who had John the Baptist beheaded. Well, Caligula deposed Herod Antipas. He got angry with him and took his kingship away and gave it instead to Herod Agrippa I. So now he's the king of Galilee. A little bit later, when Claudius becomes emperor, he also gave Herod the rulership of Judea. Now you might recall that Judea, since the time of Herod the Great, after his death, had been ruled by a Roman governor like Pontius Pilate. But now Claudius makes Herod Agrippa the king of Judea. So this Herod Agrippa I is now the king of Galilee, the king of Samaria, the king of Judea. He is essentially ruling the same territory as his grandfather, Herod the Great. Now, interestingly enough, this Herod enjoys the favor of the Jewish population. He's held in higher esteem than any other Herod ever was by the Jewish people probably because his grandmother was a woman by the name of Mariamne, who was a Hasmonean princess, that is a Jewish princess. And because he was related to her, her grandson, the people thought highly of him. And he worked very hard to stay in the good estates of the people of Judea. He tried to curry popular appeal, and to a great extent he was able to do that. And thus, for political reasons, he decides to persecute the church. And he moves especially against the apostles. It says 
he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. And when he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he also proceeded to seize Peter. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. He arrested Peter, put him in prison, handed him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover was complete. Now, why in the first persecution were the apostles protected, but here in the second persecution, Herod feels he can move against them? In the first persecution, they were still held in high popular approval. The Sanhedrin could not move against them, but now Herod feels he could. What has changed? Cornelius. You remember Peter had gone to Cornelius' household and converted Gentiles. That also perhaps the population had heard about what happened in Antioch. There's actually a full Gentile church up there. Suddenly, the apostles are not held in such high regard by the Jewish population because they've begun to go directly to Gentiles. You see, as long as the population consider this movement of Jesus a Jewish movement, they, they still thought highly of Peter and the rest. But now that you're bringing Gentiles in, that changes the equation. That's a dangerous thing. The Jewish population thinks you're converting Gentiles. You're not just another Jewish movement. You're something different. And so popular opinion begins to change. Herod realizes this. And so he thinks, I might gain approval among the broader Jewish population if I move against these followers of Jesus. And so he does. He executes James. Now, James is one of the sons of thunder. Remember James and John, those two sons of thunder. He arrests James and he executes him. James becomes the first of the original apostles to be martyred. Here at Gage's popular opinion, they seem to approve of what he's done. So he also arrests Peter. Peter, everyone knows, is the leader, the recognized leader of this movement of Jesus. And so he puts Peter in prison. Now, it's Passover time. So he's going to hold him in prison until after the Passover. Remember, he's appealing to Jewish popular approval. So don't do anything during Passover to upset anybody. But after Passover is over, I'm going to bring Peter out. And I'm going to put him on trial and probably execute him. The first persecution has begun. James has been martyred. Peter has been arrested. The church knows what is about to come. More harassment and persecution. In our next session, we'll look a little further at how this persecution unfolds, and we'll also look at what happens to Peter while he's in prison, in Herod's prison. But that'll be for our next session. Uh, today, I hope you have a great day, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time for our five-minute Bible study in the Acts of the Apostles.